Welcome back to Six Arrows. Today we're going to talk a little bit about some of the hunting options that I have available to me this year that I'm going to be using on the places that I hunt. Um, in the past, primarily what I've hunted is public land, either in the parks program that I've mentioned on here before, or just uh, just general public land that anybody can access at any time. Um, for that reason, I typically like to be super mobile. Um, I like what I use to be lightweight, easy to take in, to take out, uh, set up quickly. Um, I do not set up um, a lot of permanent stand locations. Um, I don't like risking leaving my equipment out on public land for the most part unless I know I'm coming back in the next day, um, for one. Um, and I don't like to keep a ton of different things, so if I leave something in the woods that means I can't use it someplace else. So it kind of limits my options from that perspective. So I like to take my stuff for the most part in and out uh, every time and uh, I'll show you some of the options that I have available from that perspective. Um, so this year I have four primary places that I'm going to be hunting. Number one is the parks program. Uh, number two is a very small four acre plot uh, that my family owns. It's primarily a, a hay field but it has some trees and waterways that run through it so it's a really good corridor. Um, I want to take um, a deer there this year and also I'm trying to get my little sisters um, on a deer there as well. So I do have a pop-up box blind um, now that I just finished telling you how I don't like to set up permanent hunting locations. On this property I am going to set up two permanent hunting locations. Um, one on kind of either end of the property. There's two kind of main places that the deer funnel through. I'm going to put that box blind um, on one end and then I'm going to put, I have a, a cheap hang on stand. Um, it'll only be maybe six or eight feet off the ground. Um, but since that's such a small piece, I'm going to get those places set up. Um, so I'm not making a lot of ruckus getting in there or for my sisters to get in there as well. So, um, yeah, so that's one place. Another place uh, is another fairly small plot. It's um, a coworker of mine has about five acres and um, his property backs up into kind of a creek area and it's nothing but a, uh, a parade of deer back there. So you got to be super quiet getting in and out of there. Um, I'll show you what I'm going to use for that one. It, again, it'll be mobile things. I'm not going to leave a stand in there or anything of that nature. Um, and then the two other places, the park program, obviously. And then the fourth one, um, I have a friend of mine that gave me the option to hunt uh, where he does. It's probably about a 40 or 50 acre piece. Primarily agricultural fields, but there are some tree-lined waterways and creekways that go through there. And uh, I haven't been there yet, I haven't seen it yet, but he says um, he sees deer there on a regular basis. And again, I'll be using kind of my mobile setups with that place as well. Specifically since I don't have a lot of history there, and I'll kind of be scouting it as I go in and then setting up with what I... Uh, where I, where I think I can have the most success. So that's the descriptions of the four primary spots where I'll be hunting this year. Let's talk about some of the options that I have uh, to get on some deer. So this is actually a pop-up turkey hunting screen. Um, a lot of the places that I do hunt are very, very thick. So even if you get in a tree, you don't have a lot of clear uh, shooting lanes or anything of that nature. Um, and, like I said, as mobile as I am, I, I don't really want to take the time uh, to take a saw out there and, and uh, clear a lot of shooting lanes every time I, I come up to a new spot where I would like to hang. So, if the option to, to get in a tree isn't there, this is a great option. It weighs less than five pounds. It folds up into, geez, 
maybe about eight inches around and maybe about two feet tall and just has a little sling you throw over your shoulder super lightweight tuck up under any kind of bush or in some kind of trees um, near a scrape um, anything that you might think that that might attract deer um, and yeah pops up super nice you tuck in back there his windows come down pretty quickly I try to keep the window that I plan on shooting out of down uh, I, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to open that window with a deer in front of me um, and primarily it's there to conceal my conceal me while I draw um, that, that's really the purpose of it and it, uh, it tends to work pretty well so last year was the first year that I had this um, had some pretty good encounters with it I didn't shoot anything from behind it yet um, but uh, was super encouraged with um, the places it let me get into and the hunts I had out of it. So excited to hit this one again this year. This has been my primary workhorse the last three years. Um, this is the Muddy Outfitter tree stand. Uh, aluminum base, um, two straps uh, to, to tie it to the tree. Um, yeah, this has been a great stand. It weighs, I believe, 18 pounds comes with the backpack straps on it. I pair that with the Muddy Pro climbing sticks. Again, a super popular design. Tend, seems to be that they're always sold out when you try to get them. Um, the cam system with these things is just the best. Um, I, I prefer that so much to the regular straps that you see on a lot of other steps. Pretty lightweight. Four of these weighs 10 pounds. So between four sticks and the 18 pound stand I'm carrying in um, 28 pounds as I go in uh, and then the small other things like my grunt tube, rattle bag, range finder and stuff of that nature. So pretty lightweight. Um, only complaint I would have to this is there is a pretty nifty way to, to strap these onto the back of this but they don't necessarily lock in as tight as you would like to so it's not every time um, but every now and again you'll be walking into the woods and you'll you'll hear some some rattling some clanking and as soon as I do I stop and, and torque torque everything up and make sure I'm not making any noise as I get in I can get this thing up into a tree um, very quickly within 10 minutes I from the time I identify where I'm going I can be up in the tree strapped in with my harness and ready to hunt. So as much as I love these sticks, um, I do wish they could get me a little bit higher sometimes. Um, I probably can get about 20 feet up with these four sticks. Uh, I wish they would have the option to make these a little bit longer. This is just an 18 inch step. Um, I'm a relatively tall guy. I'm six foot one. Um, so if I could make these slightly longer, that would make me happy for sure. Um, but in lieu of that, I've looked at all kinds of aider options, most of which I don't like. Uh, the strap ones that you carry up the tree with you, um, I don't know. I can be a little bit clumsy sometimes, and I can see myself dropping one. Um, and yeah, most people carry a second one with me. That, that still bothers me a little bit. So I did find a solution I'm going to try this year. It is a wire rope aider from Eastern Woods Outdoors. Um, these connect permanently to your sticks. So I pull these two bolts out, put these little eyes underneath there. And this is a 20 inch aider. So um, I think that should get me quite a bit higher. And we'll see. Uh, I'll show you in another video once I get these put together, uh, how that works and uh, let you know what I think about that. But I'm going to give that a try this year. But yeah, just a wire rope aider from Eastern Woods Outdoors. And then this year I am taking the jump into the saddle hunting for the first time. I've been intrigued with it for the last couple years. Um, and I'm, I finally bit the bullet and I'm going to give it a shot. So this is the tethered 
mantis. Um, just came in a couple weeks ago. I haven't even been up a tree with it yet. Uh, but basically, kind of have a two-part system here. It's very lightweight. You can step into this here. Clip this around your waist, like so. And then take these straps and they hook into these loops right here on this side and this side. Pull those to me. And then these loops here are for your linesman's rope while you're climbing the tree, just like you would use on any tree stand, uh, just like you would use on any climbing system. I have two of the muddy uh, linesman's ropes, so I need to pull one of those off my one of my other harnesses and put that onto here. And then uh, this is what actually supports you in the tree. Um, the other part of this is the bridge is the, the bridge line that you attach to the tree. Let's move over here where I have it attached to a post and I'll show you how to hook that up. So this is the other rope that comes with it. So you put this around the tree, cinch it in here. You have your carabiner here on your tool stick knot and then you snap your bridge into this. Now the one thing I'm missing is the platform that you stand on. Um, I did not buy the tethered platform. Um, a couple things I didn't like about it and uh, I have some ideas for something that I'm going to retrofit and hopefully I'll be able to show that to you uh, relatively soon. So as you can see, snap into this. Uh, once you get snapped in you would take or unclip your linesman's rope so you're always attached to the tree at all times and you stand on uh, your platform. I've also seen people use climbing sticks or uh, the wild edge kind of lock on steps that's also an option um, as your platform or standing location. Um, we'll see again it's brand new to me I haven't taunted out of this yet. Um, I will say unbelievably lightweight. Um, this is very uh, easy to clip on. I've walked around with it and I don't feel like it's going to fall off of me. Uh, so I could definitely see myself uh, just putting this on, carrying in my sticks, and whatever small platform I end up using. Um, yeah, and it'll be much lighter than the 28 pound stand and probably quicker to set up than that will be too. But it, this is much more comfortable than I expected it to be. I can absolutely see myself, you know, leaning on the bridge here. I absolutely need to do plenty of practicing shooting in all different situations out of this thing. So I need to get the platform thing figured out very soon so I can uh, get plenty of practice in. But super excited to try this out. I've watched people do this for a couple of years. Ruben has tried out a couple different saddles. He's been happy with some of them, unhappy with others, and it tends to be if you're a saddle hunter, you always uh, end up retrofitting your stuff anyways, and he's in the process of doing that too right now. So um, I might uh, do another video and show you what he's come up with as well. But super excited to try this out and I'll definitely show you uh, how it goes, let you know what I think. Um, if you have any questions about that, feel free to hit me up in the comments. I'll be happy to, to share whatever I learn as I go along with this. So those are my primary options for hunting this year. Uh, the only other one that I didn't show you, I do have a ghillie suit. Um, hunted out of that a couple times last year. Um, again, didn't take a deer out of it, but it did let me get into some uh, interesting situations. I do tend to think that I, pref I will prefer hunting from behind the blind instead of the ghillie suit. 
um, but I'm sure I'll uh, take that out there some as well. I've talked to some uh, mobile hunters and they say that they can go into just about anywhere with the ghillie suit and wearing the saddle and then they're set for any situation that they might run into. So definitely going to give that a try um, and see uh, what, uh, what kind of situations I can put myself in this year. Okay, that said, I am going to take six shots uh, from this blind here. Um, it is anytime, I, I'm not super comfortable shooting out of a blind uh, just because uh, I know I need to pay more attention to how I arrange myself in that confined space and where exactly my arrow is leaving here. So, um, Yep, I definitely have already practiced some from this, but I'm going to show you my six, six shots from this this evening. Let's go take a look. Okay, so this top one here is exactly why I need to be practicing out of a blind. Pretty sure the arrow's fletchings hit the bottom of the opening in the blind as I was uh, shooting. I was sitting a little bit lower than I needed to uh, to be shooting through that opening. So, perfect example of why I need to be shooting, uh, getting plenty of practice out of that before I take this into the field to chase some live animals. The rest of these, more than happy with that from 18 yards. Uh, all the rest of these are dead to your arrows. So, yep, like I said, um, get the practice in, in the situations that you're going to be hunting in so that you're, you make sure that you're taking good, clean, ethical shots. Have a good one.